cutting edge and RFM. You know, we got a letter from the Leonard P. Oil Foundation. Very riveting letter that it was sent to me. I guess they sent it to me to read it. So I'm going to read this letter from the Leonard P. Howell Foundation. This is Leonard Howell family, to be exact. So here goes. The Leonard Percival Howell Foundation's position on Pinnacle and the Rastafari Millennium Council. For the record, let it be known that those Rastafari individuals that have registered themselves as directors of the Ethio African Diaspora Union Millennium Council, EADUMC, more popularly known as the Rastafari Millennium Council, do not speak for or represent the Leonard Oil Found the Leonard Oil family or the LPH Foundation. The present chairman of the I sorry LPH, which is the Leonard Powell Leonard Oil, sorry, <laughs> Leonard Oil. <laughs> Alright, come, come 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 again. Alright. For the record, let it be known that those Rastafari individuals that have re registered themselves as the directors of the Ethio African Diaspora Union Millennium Council, more popularly known as the Rastafari Millennium Council, do not speak for or represent the Leonard Oil family or the foundation. The present chairman of the LPH Foundation and the first son of Leonard P. Oil want all members of the Rastafari movement, the Jamaican government, and the wider public to be aware of this fact. Thus, in regards to matters concerning Pinnacle, the Rastafari Millennium Council have in reality been acting without the consent and our endorsement of the Leonard P. Oil Foundation for some time now. To add insult to injury, their actions thus far with regards to Pinnacle have been contrary to the wishes of the foundation. They have thus far filed objections against the intention to declare lots and pinnacle as national monuments twice. These actions are preventing the wider Rastafari community and the Jamaican public as a whole from benefiting from the positive steps taken by the Jamaican National Heritage Trust to bring us closer to the realization of pinnacle as a national heritage site. They have shown themselves to be extremely self-serving and short-sighted so far as the matter of Pinnacle is concerned. For the record, they filed an objection back in 2009 and then recently in February of this year, 2017, when the Jamaican National Heritage Trust just gazetted its intention to declare lots 198, 200, lot 201, 202, 206, and 294 as national monuments in the January 26, 2017, Thursday edition of the Daily Gleaner. On both occasions, the objections that were filed by the Rastafari Millennium Council has been done so without the consent and endorsement of the Leonard P. Oil Foundation. These type of actions speak to the gross disrespect that has been leveled at the foundation by the Rastafari Millennium Council. And this will not be tolerated anymore by the foundation. Moreover, I don't believe any of the registered directors of the Rastafari Millennium Council ever lived at Pinnacle at any point in time or ever interacted with my father directly 
or even demonstrated any knowledge of the nuanced and complex Rastafari practice of my father or his followers during the time when Pinnacle became the first ever Rastafari communal community. Yet, they have acted as if they purported to know and understand everything there is in relation to my father and Pinnacle. In reality, they do not have any authority whatsoever to speak on matters concerning either the LPH or Pinnacle as a national heritage site. Additionally, they do not have any permission or authority to conduct the annual birthday celebration for my father on June 16th of every year. Only those Rastafari groups who are willing to work in truly collaborative spirit with the foundation and the Oelites are recognized as part of the planning committee for the annual birthday celebration. Sincerely yours, Monty Owell, chairman of the Leonard P. Owell Foundation. As I said, this was a letter sent to me and obviously it was sent to me to be read on the program. So I read it on the program. So this is the start of something, I think. The Millennium Council, I don't know if they got this letter or if they want to answer the letter with a letter. We will also read whatever letter they send to me personally or to the cutting edge or to Cabo. We will, we will read their response to the letter that we just read. So that is that. And this is the cutting edge on RFM. Okay, we want to play this. We want to play this because I, I, I see some stiffness. <laughs> I see some stiffness going out, you know. I, mean, I tell you, as some people get stiff after hearing that. That letter was sent to me by, by Leonard Owen's son, actually, as you hear. Um, uh, Monty, Monty Owen, that, that letter was sent by him. Okay. Here you go. I want you to listen to this on a, on a different note. This is a cutting edge, you know. Remember that. So I want you to listen to this on a different note. You ready for this? Okay, here goes. Truer words were never spoken. The less you associate with some people, the more your life will improve. Anytime you tolerate mediocrity in others, it increases your mediocrity. An important attribute in successful people is their impatience with negative thinking and negative acting people. As you grow, your associates will change. Some of your friends will not want you to go on. They will want you to stay where they are. Friends that don't help you climb will want you to crawl. Your friends will stretch your vision or choke your dream. Those that don't increase you will eventually decrease you. Consider this. Never receive counsel from unproductive people. Never discuss your problems with someone incapable of contributing to the solution. Because those who never succeed themselves are always first to tell you how. Not everyone has a right to speak into your life. You are certain to get the worst of the bargain when you exchange ideas with the wrong person. Don't follow anyone who's not going anywhere. With some people, you spend an evening. With others, you invest it. Be careful where you stop to inquire for directions along the road of life. Wise is the person who fortifies his life with the right friendships. If you run with wolves, you will learn how to howl. But if you associate with eagles, you will learn how to soar to great heights. A mirror reflects a man's face, but what he is really like is shown by the kind of friends he chooses. 
The simple but true fact of life is that you become like those with whom you closely associate, for the good and the bad. Note, be not mistaken. This is applicable to family as well as friends. Yes, do love, appreciate, and be thankful for your family, for they will always be your family, no matter what. Just know that they are human first, and though they are family to you, they may be a friend to someone else and will fit somewhere in the criteria above. In prosperity, our friends know us. In adversity, we know our friends. Never make someone a priority when you are only an option for them. If you are going to achieve excellence in big things, you develop the habit in little matters. Excellence is not an exception. It is a prevailing attitude. Yes. Tracy, listen. Words to really so key. I ask if you listen. Okay. Uh, we want the people them listen to these things, you know. Especially them over the night. Uh, you need some of them kind of inspirational talk. But we want to play this. We want to play this. All right, we could play this first and then go play the other thing we want to play. That was a message from Tyler Perry. You know, everybody know, you know Tyler Perry, Tracy? Yeah, the actor, mm -hmm. the producer, the director, all the above. Okay, so somebody tell me, say, they would have liked ear back. The first one we play. Apparently, them catch part tight. Somebody say, if I could play it back. Well, we have time, so we will play it back for them. But my white friends are upset and for good reason. It's not every day you people get to see the inside secrets we whites have used for decades to dominate people of color. But don't fear. My white friends are just mad because once you know all the secrets to gaining real black power, they will no longer be able to rule over you because basically you blacks are the cash cow for white economics and it has always been this way. Now, let's get back down to business. Today, I'm going to give you three more tips to gaining real black power. And this time I will try to keep it short. Last time we spoke about unity, religion and economics. And while these are very important to establishing black power there are other factors, more subtle, which you will need if you were to ever rule the world again. The first is self-image and self-love. The reason why you spend so much time trying to be friends with us white people is because you really don't want to be friends with yourselves. Your issue with self-image is a psychological one, which we implanted when we gave you our religion. This weapon was very effective because it got you black people to fall in love with our image of beauty while at the same time making you hate your own. You see, every time a little black girl watches television, she is systematically being programmed to hate herself. And this is really a crime, because that little black girl will grow up and teach her little daughter to hate herself too. These methods of mind control are called implants. They are very effective and boy let me tell you. If I had a dime for every black female who permed her hair, I'd be a millionaire. You black men really have to get it together. For you to perm your hair is saying to the world that nappy. Kinky hair is not good enough to wear. To believe this is culturally suicidal and reinforces our white supremacy system on every level. To perm your hair as a black woman is like a shark cutting off its fin. To do this is an open declaration that you hate who you are. And everybody knows this but you. We whites look at you and quietly laugh. We can't believe how you try to suppress your own DNA and then teach it to your daughters like it is some kind of family recipe to make popsicles. This act is nothing to be proud of. You should stop it and stop it now. I've seen little black girls as young as five years old with perms in their hair. This is completely niggardly and self-hating. Some of you black girls take it a step further and wear other people's hair in your heads. How can any self-respecting people do this and keep a straight face? I mean really. This is ridiculous. I'm sure the Koreans are laughing all the way to the bank selling you blacks other people's hair. 
And I'd be willing to bet that the Hindus who distribute it are getting a nice payday too. You see under our white supremacy culture we take your sicknesses and turn them into profit for us. We know you cannot stand your black skin either and will buy all kinds of creams and lighteners to look more like us. We've made billions of dollars on your dysfunction. This is the way we keep the money rolling in. The sad thing is you hate yourself so much, you were willing to burn your scalp and face to change it. Some I have seen cut their noses down to be more white. Michael Jackson was one of those girls who did this. I mean guys. I mean. Whatever. You get what I am saying. It's all about not being who you really are. But worst is the fact that you can't really say you love others until you can truly love yourselves. Which is why some of your relationships with black men are so bad. He's the deep part. Some of you would diss a black guy because maybe he didn't go to church or have a good job. He would say if he does not believe in Jesus you cannot date him. Remember, many of the images of Jesus have blonde hair and European features. So you diss the black guy for a blonde hair white guy who's basically a ghost, and then turn around and diss yourself by bleaching and perming your hair to look like the blonde haired white image we gave you during slavery. Long story short, you were so in love with our image you reject everything that's not us. And that's how we control you. If I saw my white girlfriend trying to put other people's hair in her head and trying to look black, I would not respect her as much as I probably should. Further, I would get her a psychological evaluation because, like a fish shaving off its scales and wearing cat fur to be more like its enemy, a black woman perming her own hair to wear other people's long stringy hair is borderline psychotic. And means the mental evaluation needs to be put in place. You black women are the mothers of all civilization, for Christ's sakes. Going around trying to reject your own birthright. If you ever want to get back on top, you are going to have to stop perming and bleaching yourselves. Teach your daughters and sons to love who they are. And stop watching sex in the city. It's just a bunch of white women bed hopping and living a lifestyle you will never see. You are listening then to you Love being black. Turn those skinny white bitches off and give your babies a future where black girls rule. This is a good start. You are listening to Muta Baruka. Welcome to Jamaican Roots and Culture. I'm Pat Clark. The cotton tree is of cultural, spiritual, and historical importance to Jamaica. The appearance of this extraordinary tree makes it a prominent feature of the Jamaican landscape. A cotton tree can live for hundreds of years, and indeed, there are cotton trees which have existed in Jamaica since the days of slavery. While some regard the cotton tree's immense size as the reason for its association with the spiritual realm, others point to a possible connection between the cotton tree and the baobab tree, which is a tree of great importance to the people of Africa. The tree's relationship with animals, such as Jamaica's yellow snake, is another reason why the cotton tree is often shunned and viewed with fear in Jamaica. The yellow snake is known to sleep in the hollow of the giant cotton tree. Some say the cotton tree is linked to the spiritual realm because of its association with graveyards. In fact, in the days of slavery, the belief was also strong among the enslaved Africans that the cotton trees could move about and assemble with each other in the dead of the night. Another reason for the association between the cotton tree and the spirit world is the notion that it embodies not its own soul but the souls of the indwelling spiritual beings such as the souls of gods or some other ancestral beings. All things considered, however, the most important way in which the cotton tree is associated with the spirit world is the belief that the spirits of the dead, the roots and branches of the tree and the spiritual realm have long been recognized, although there has been little effort to explain why. In Jamaican folklore, the cotton tree is chief among some 50 plants that are for various reasons linked with spirituality. 
Jamaicans view the tree with awe as they are believed to be in some way connected to ancestral spirits, perhaps because some of these trees have been in existence from back in the days of slavery, and it was a common practice in those days to hang slaves on cotton trees. The spirits of the dead ancestors are then believed to have haunted those trees. And now to end Jamaican roots and culture, here's our famous quotation from the Black Diaspora. There are few things in the world as dangerous as sleepwalkers. The words of Ralph Ellison. And that's how we end this week's edition of Jamaican Roots and Culture. For Jamaican Roots and Culture, I'm Pat Clark. Yeah, this is the cutting edge and I refer as you can hear with the panel. A tracker. <laughs> and we now come and fight. We want to play something here that you really have to listen to carefully. The reason why you have to listen to carefully is because of the accent. It is a shaman from India. We him call a guru. You know, they have gurus like oracles, like people who help you to move from one level of consciousness to the lev- next level. Like counselors, like advisors in the spiritual realms in the eastern parts of the world, especially India. They call them guru. Well, this is a guru. And I'm going to ask the question, where is God? Somebody asks him the question, where is God? And this is how him answer. Here goes. You have to listen carefully. How have we been assigned to this particular uh, part of the planet in terms of people, uh, in terms of parents, in terms of people? Uh, this is in terms of existence in this planet. And the other question is, uh, which again triggers my uh, belief in God, is who is the person who controls our life before we are born and after our death? So you believe lots of things. <laughs> so you believe before you were born you were somewhere, after you are dead you are going to be somewhere else. Everything you believe, too many assumptions. When you have so many assumptions, no way to approach truth, isn't it so? If you want to approach truth, the first thing is, you don't assume anything. Is it so? If you're interested in truth, if you're searching for truth, that means you have not assumed anything. Is it so? If you already made your assumption, you're just trying to find a confirmation for your assumption, that is not seeking truth. A true seeker of truth has no assumptions, he's just looking. Shall we just look or shall we try to confirm your assumptions? Hmm? You want confirmation? <laughs> You're right. Does that get you any closer? If I tell you your beliefs are right, does it get you any closer to truth? Does it? You feel better. Oh, okay, I've been right. But nothing so gets solved, isn't it? Life doesn't get solved, does it? No. So confirming your belief systems doesn't mean anything. This is a big problem with human beings. They want to be right all the time. It's the biggest problem. <laughs> in fact, it is the basis of all conflict in the world. I am right, you are wrong. This is a problem, isn't it? Isn't it so? What I believe is right, what you believe is wrong. Isn't this the basis of all problems in the world? Whether it's within the family or in the community or in the world or wherever? Yes? Shall we eliminate the problem a little bit? The first thing you need to do is, after all, they're your beliefs. And your beliefs are not original, picked up, isn't it? Your priest or mullah or father or mother, somebody put it into you, isn't it so? Picked up from somebody. It depends how powerfully they worked on you. <laughs> and they work pretty powerfully. <laughs> because the business is at stake otherwise. So what you assume may have nothing to do with reality. 
Now you are trying to understand something which is beyond the physical, with physical context, it won't happen. You are trying to perceive something which is beyond physical through sense perception, such a thing cannot happen. Now you want to measure the depth of the ocean, but you went with a foot scale. You will obviously come with wrong conclusions, isn't it so? If you want to measure the depth of the ocean, your first business is to get the right kind of instrument. Yes? Yes or no? If that's your first business, that's all I'm saying. You want to know something beyond the physical. First thing that you need to do is to have a perception which is beyond five senses, which can perceive that which is not physical. Only then you perceive. Otherwise you can only believe or disbelieve, isn't it? If I tell you God is actually in my pocket, this many people can believe me. This is a ridiculous thing, oh we don't believe that, but I can tell you a more elaborate story if you want, which we can work on and make you believe in, isn't it? Right now God is in my pocket. This many people believe me, this many people disbelieve me. Have these people gotten any closer to God than they were before? Have they? Or have these people gone any further away? No, nothing changes, isn't it? So why are we wasting our time trying to confirm our assumptions? You must enhance your perception because only by perceiving you will know. There is no other way to know. Is it so? You will know anything only when you perceive it. Till then you do not know it. Is that a reality? Is that a reality? People who are not on talking terms with me, is that a reality? If you perceive, you know. If you do not perceive, you do not know. You are unwilling to admit I do not know, so you believe, isn't it? If you are just trying to pass the social test, belief is a good way to do it. But you want to really know, then belief is not a good way to do it. Belief gives you confidence. And fools getting confidence is dangerous. Do you understand? When idiots become very confident, it's very, very dangerous, isn't it so? Do you see? Intelligent or hesitant, stupid or confident. Have you seen this? <laughs> great confidence because when you simply believe something, you will have great confidence. You will have no doubt about anything because you don't apply yourself to anything. You are one hundred percent sure. Do you see George Bush how confident he is? <laughs> He's very confident, isn't he? Doesn't he seem like confident? Very confident. He came to India and declared, I am a believer, I am a true believer. I thought, well, you don't have to say it, can't we see? <laughs> you must be a believer, otherwise you don't walk blind into situations. If you are somebody with sense, you would look around, isn't it? You would see what is there and what is not there because you are a believer not just in God, in so many other things. The most sensible way to start your life is, what I know, I know. What I do not know, I do not know. Once you come to this sincerely, you will see your knowing will constantly go on expanding on a daily basis. Otherwise, the moment you believe, you are stagnant. Belief is death actually. Marx said, it's the opium. Religion is opium because it puts people to sleep, he's very right. It's put people to sleep, isn't it? Hasn't it? Sleep is comfortable. What's wrong with it? Why sleep? Why don't you die? It is even more comfortable. Do you know that? Because anyway you're a believer, after all your God is waiting, why don't you go? Yes, isn't it? <laughs> Because anyway you know when you die you'll go to God. What is the problem? Why are you waiting, going to this hospital, all this nonsense, why don't you go? Why are you delaying your progress towards God? That's not right. You're not a true believer, isn't it? <laughs> this is the Cochin Age and IFM. You just listen to Sadhu's guru talking about where is God? 
you know, we always say if we use the term God is in a eye and out of eye. You know, you are in God, God is in you, just let go. Anyway, we're going to play the same bridging that Sado, Sad, Sad Guru talking about karma. You know, karma, people say karma. For those of you who don't know what karma is, karma is saying that whatever you do, whether it's bad or good, it come back to you. So if you do something bad, eventually that badness will come back. And if you do something or things good, eventually good will come back to you. That is a term they use named karma. A lot of us is surrounded by bad karma. Some of us is surrounded by good karma. The bad karma that you are surrounded by, sometimes you have to really check yourself to find out why is it that you are surrounded by so much bad karmas. Likewise, good karma. You have to check yourself and say, oh, what have I done to deserve such goodness in my life? So, we want to play the guru talking about karma. Now, the essence of all this is, first thing is to understand the nature of how existence is happening. Either you can look at this or you can look at the atom or you can look at the universe. If you want to look at the universe, it is complex, it is difficult because you don't have a gallery seat, you know. There is no… Uh, it is not like a stadium, you can sit somewhere and watch the whole universe. Very difficult, you can only see it in pieces. If you want, an a want, want to watch an atom, nobody has seen an atom, do you know this? Do you know this? Even in a super electron microscope, you can't see an atom. We have observed its activity, but we have never seen an atom as such. But we have broken it. We are capable of breaking things that even we cannot see. That's our… we are very proud of this these days <laughs> We can break anything. We can make it or not is a questionable thing, but we can break anything we want. Even if we cannot see it, we can break it. Now what you see and what you do not see itself is a very dicey thing in the sense. What is it that you can see? Right now can you see my hand? Yes. You can see my hand only because my hand stops light. If my hand did not stop this light, if it allowed light to pass through, you wouldn't see this hand, yes? Or in other words, right now your visual apparatus can see only those things which stop light. Anything that allows light through, you cannot see it. You cannot see life, light itself, first of all. Can you see the light that is here? No, only whatever stops light, you can see it. What does not stop light, you cannot see it. Very bad, isn't it? You must be able to see all those things which allow light to pass through because they are important things. But right now your visual apparatus are trained to see or capable of seeing only that which stops light. So the whole process of seeing life the way it is means, first of all evolving an eye a thoughtless eye, an eye which is free of thought. When I say free of thought, it is free from the taint of memory. Right now these two eyes are heavily loaded with memory. So you can see this, if you see a group of people like this, if you just casually look like this, if the, among these hundreds of people, if there is one face that you are familiar with, you will see suddenly that face sticks out. Have you noticed this? Have you noticed this? Yes. You are going in a street, there are hundred people standing there. 
your friend is among that. If you look here, just this friend's face is more clear than the rest of the faces because this eye works with memory. The more memory you have, the better it sees. No memory, it cannot see. Memory means an accumulated past. Memory means information. Memory means that which does not exist but acts out as if it does. Memories are more real than reality, isn't it so? Yes or no? See, I want you to understand everything in your life is run by memory. Not just your computer stick, everything in your life. When I say memory, not just what you carry here, your very body is a body of memory. Why if you eat a banana, it becomes a masculine body and if she eats a banana, it becomes a feminine body, is simply because of the memory that it contains, isn't it? The information that is stored in this body and that body is different. Same banana, it becomes a man, same banana, it becomes a woman. Yes or no? Huh? Are you eating different types of bananas? <laughs> same thing, same food if you eat, it is becoming one way. In one person it is becoming dark skin, in another person it's becoming fair skin. How? The memory that you carry. Do you remember your great, 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 great grandfather? You don't but his nose is sitting on your face. Your body remembers, isn't it? You may not have no idea who it was, but your body remembers even today. A million years ago, how your forefathers were, still it remembers, isn't it? So what you call as my body is just a body of memory and eyes are loaded with memory. An um, eye which is loaded with memory, an eye which is corrupted with memory, cannot see anything the way it is. It will only see things as it is convenient because the software is working from inside. It will not allow you to see anything the way it is. This is what traditionally we are referring to as karma. It is there in your body, it is there in your energies, it is there in the way your chemical reactions happen, it is there in your brain, it is there in your mind, it is there in everything. In the very physical energy that you carry, there is memory because you will see each person's energies behave differently from the other simply because of the type of memory it carries. If you want to get rid of this, it's a long process and if you get rid of this, dismantling of the personality and the body will happen. So another way is to create a distance from it. Just hold it little away. When you want to play with it, you play with it. When you want to switch it off, you must be able to switch it off. So for this, an external view is needed. Right now, your ears are loaded with memory, your eyes are loaded with memory, your tongue is loaded with memory. Why, <laughs> if you are born in Karnataka, if you go to North India, food doesn't taste good is because the tongue is loaded with memory. Yes or no? Have you suffered this or no? You went north and uh, they said, Alu Bhaji, Alu <laughs> Alu matter, alu, alu palak, alu parota, alu, 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 they said. You couldn't stay there <laughs> because your tongue is loaded with memory. It wants the same things back, otherwise it will suffer. So what being loaded with memory means is a cocoon of the past is holding you. It will not allow you to even move into the present. A cocoon of the past holds you and you allow it to do this because it feels safe, it creates a cocoon. There is safety but in safety there is also imprisonment 
you're really safe if we lock you up in a safe, isn't it? But the problem is you can't get out. That's the whole problem. <laughs> walls that you build as self-protection, they also become the walls of self-imprisonment. That is the nature of life. If you lock yourself from inside or outside, it's the same thing. As long as you do not open the door, whether somebody locked you from outside or you locked yourself from inside, there is no difference. Anyway you are imprisoned, isn't it? At least somebody locked you from outside, you can at least complain and scream. You locked yourself from inside, you can only be depressed. You cannot even scream, who at whom will you scream? So this process of what we are looking at is the memory imprints itself on all levels. Right up to the elemental level, from the five elements which function here, from just after that memory's work starts. So when we utter the word karma, it is not one simple formula or it's not, you know, people are saying theory of karma, we are not talking about any theory. We are referring to a certain reality, karma means memory. Action and memory, past action exists only in the form of memory, isn't it so? Yes? Memory not just what you carry here, every cell in the body carries its own memory. Why one atom behaves differently from another atom? Though the same ingredients is, it has a memory. A hydrogen atom has one kind of memory, oxygen atom has another kind of memory. Unless you mix them up, they will continue to behave like that. It is in a small circle, you are in a little larger circle, the universe is in a much larger circle, but the same memory rules all of it. So when we said karma, we are not talking about some concept or philosophy, we are referring to a certain reality which is finding manifestation as who you are. The very shape of your body is because of memory. If a bird eats a mango, it becomes a bird. If a worm eats a mango, it becomes a worm. If you eat a mango, you become a human being, same mango. How many things it's doing depending upon what kind of memory it carries. Isn't it? You, what you call as a seed, if you plant the same seed, if you plant a seed in the same soil, here you plant a mango tree, here you plant, plant an apple tree in the same soil, this will only produce apples, this will only produce mangoes. I know there is a newspaper picture where, uh, you know, a jackfruit has become bananas, that's different. Yes? You saw this? Are you all from Bangalore or Devanali? <laughs> no, you didn't see this. A bunch of bananas are coming out of a jackfruit for some reason. <laughs> and that's a freak. And that's happened because of some mix-up. We don't know who did the mix-up. <laughs> but essentially, if you, in the same soil, if you plant an apple seed and a mango seed, this will only produce apples, this will only produce mangoes because seed is a certain amount of memory, isn't it? Whether it is a seed of a plant or your father's seed which enter your mother's womb, it is just memory and memory and memory, isn't it so? This is karma and this goes right back, right up to the elemental level, everything is memory. Only the pure element is free from memory. So the idea, when we start, we're starting of Bhutesha, because that's the most important thing, that he mastered the element, that's why we bow down to him, because, because he mastered the elements, he has an eye which has no memory, a taintless eye which sees everything just the way it is. So yoga essentially means developing an eye which is not contaminated by memory, which simply sees. It does not see things the way your memory perverts it. It simply sees everything the way it is. This eye will see those things which do not stop light. Right now these two eyes can only see what stops light. 
If you start seeing something that does not stop light, that means another dimension of the eye is beginning to function. Yes. Concepts and ideas. One speak of memory. And all memory is the source of all feelings. If you if you do something and it create a certain feeling inside of you, bad or good, it's because of that memory. You know them say memories don't leave like people. You have to agree with him. You have to agree with him. When you feel or taste something, it's because of the memory. If you never experienced that taste before, it will be different. But because you have experienced other tastes, when you taste something else, out, out of bounds to what you know, it becomes insipid. You know, my, my daughter, the elder daughter, my older daughter, she loved porridge and she loved dashing. But I know why she loved porridge and dashing. It's because we used to get enough porridge and enough dashing. So even when she grow big as her now, porridge is a very serious thing to her. And that is memory. And most of us have that kind of attitude towards food sometimes, towards dressing, how we look and all them way there. We have that feeling towards how we look now. And if it don't correspond with a certain memory, we feel we don't look good or we feel like it na work out, it not fit in. And some of the memories is placed there by our environment and also people you know we relate biblical thinking to our memory of how we were taught it and how we read about it so we we go into the computer in our brains and try find the answer to what is confronting us now and we search in the memory bank. This is a serious thing. This is Ian Lavanzan, author of Acts of Faith, and you are listening to Muta Baruka. And as we as we hear Alan Lavanzan, we have to play this. When you feel angry. Working definition. Anger is the response to built up frustration, a rebellion against authority, the experience of having one's sense of personal power denied or infringed upon. How do you handle anger? Do you stuff it? Do you blast somebody? Do you lie to yourself and others saying you are not angry when you are? How did you feel when someone was angry with you? What were you willing to do to make things okay again if someone was angry with you? Don't you hate it when people fire a series of questions at you before your brain can compute them? I believe that anger is one of the most powerful emotions a human being can experience. Perhaps it is because the impetus for anger is passion. Passion is the driving force of life. Unfortunately, when we do not know how to process and express our anger, we also seem to have difficulty expressing our passion. You are never angry for the reason you think you are. It's one of the basic premises presented in The Course in Miracles. A psychological construct designed to create a shift in perception. The Course, published by the Foundation for Inner Peace 
teaches that anger is the ego's response to the belief that it is being attacked. The ego believes it can be attacked because it believes that we are all separate beings. However, since we are all one in the mind of God, it is impossible to be attacked because God cannot attack itself. The Course teaches, the worse people act, the greater is their need for healing. When we experience anger, there is something inside calling out for healing. Do you feel powerless, unacknowledged, unloved? Who are you really angry with? Yourself? A parent? Your first love who left you for someone else? Why are you angry? What has this person actually done? Why do you think they did it to you? What kind of judgments have you made about this person, about yourself? All of these questions and more are underneath the temporary experience of anger in which you currently find yourself. Let me remember, I have a right to feel what I feel. People act out of the need for healing. I can choose what I feel about any experience. Forgiveness will provide relief and release. Let me remember, love will heal anything that is not an expression of love. And for this, I am so grateful. Ah, uh, yalla valzant. Remember years ago we had her in the studio here when it was upstairs. We going to come back to Ayan Lavanz and after the 12 o'clock break here and the anthem here. Because, as we well say, we kind of shift up the vibes, you know them way there? Yeah, we are shift up the vibes, getting on another level, get into your mind more, get into your consciousness, but on the next level. When you draw it from the memory, it's called karma, really. Okay, so... I'm going to take a look at that. Yes, Muta. Yes, yeah, blessed. Give thanks, sir. Mm. Yes, man. Mr. Muta, I said, Sunday gone. I listen to OB. I'm the OB Java record. And say, Muta Boruka cut this record here. Yeah. Like root boy. And I said, when I hear OB cut him, I said, I have to call him again. But I have to say that, you know? Yeah. And I said, I will cut the record. I'm saying I'm out of the world, man. I'm used to sit and sit in at the Orange Bro, you know, OB, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where the tune is? Where the tune is? Rude boy. I said, brother, I'm out of the sound so nice, man. Where the tune go? All the tune. Where the tune name? Like, that's the Rude boy. Don't tell me that, that, that kind of record. Rude boy? Yes, man. Rude boy? Yes. Yeah, man, the record, I mean, I've got to shout him back now. Yeah, we're going to shout him back and come back. I mean, I don't know, no poor man, I don't know, Rudy. Yeah, man, you say, you say, man, then you have to just listen to my friend, then I'll shout him back and now, and he'll tell me if I'm playing. Yeah, okay. No? Yes. I'm a brother, you know. Him de- oh, all right, I'm a brother, all right, go on, look at that. I want to clock you now, you know. I want to clock you now, you know. Yeah, but he's my work now, he's my work still, you know. Oh, he's up on the radio, all right. Sir. Yeah, so I can't call him and I'll call you forward back. All right, bless him, bless him. I'm blessed with my brother, them stand, them, them tune in to what them listen to. All right, sir, give time. From comfort and, and, what are them I listen to in a comfort master, the pick man and what are them. I'll tell them to get back OB and I'll show you back. Yeah, all right. Okay, man, I'll call OB at 1 o'clock for find out where the tune him. All right, I don't know. All right, so... We, we want to play, back, but we don't want to play, start play it and then somebody call and we have to make them wait. Because it's not a nice thing to be waiting <laughs> when your bill, when your phone bill is dwindling. You understand? That's a serious thing when your phone bill is dwindling. Yes, I'm the first and the last, a beginning and the end. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, motor. Blessed man. 
<laughs> yeah, man. The, um, two things. The first thing is the thing the way you ask me. Both and said, do not phone you forward. Let me not get the information there. Yeah, yeah. With the, with the Radigan, yeah, Robert yeah, Gandhi. Radigan, yeah, yeah. It was, it was, I don't, I don't deal with Facebook. I don't have Facebook. Who but it Facebook was either? live on their Facebook page. Who for Facebook? Um, I'm telling you, ITV News. Mm -hmm. ITV News on 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 Thursday the 9th of March. Mm. So I gotta repeat that. So ITV News at the television station Thursday the 9th of March 2017 on their Facebook page. Okay. And what I'm going to do in addition, I'm going to do further work finally to try and get the link mm -hmm. the actual link and and send it to you um and and send it to you okay. but that is the information you know all right give thanks yeah, yeah it was live on the facebook page on thursday the 9th of march itv mm -hmm. news okay right. then the next thing now is that you know kagami in uganda who um, you know, took over from Amin, overthrew Amin with the help of um, the Nairi and others and so on. Mm. You know, for quite a long time, he has been the so-called, um, one of the favorites of the European, European them, yeah. them, you know what I mean, and thing. But I noticed that ever since guys the practice of homosexuality and lesbianism in Uganda they really don't like him again mm. and just a couple of days ago I was reading where a big story in one of the um, big propaganda papers here where they were condemning him because a, 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 a woman a mother of three single mother of three is, is, is in jail in Uganda because they said that she insult him. She insult him because she was complaining that he's corrupt, bribe a lot of people, um, do a lot of wickedness and thing, and can't find money to um, provide sanitary um, pads for these school girls in Uganda. Mm. And describe him as... Um, you know, bottom um, thing and all uh, kind of, you know, derogatory thing. Mm -hmm. And she was arrested and in, in jail because of that. And and they were attacking his wife, or whose name is Janet Museveni. So, when I read, I said, how they focusing on this um, African single mother of three, so, and, you know, raising her up then as a, as a as a alternative to most of and anything. I said there must be something to it. Yeah. Lo and behold, you see later down as you read down into the story, she is a champion of the lesbian and homosexual thing. In a Uganda. And yes. Okay. So it, so that that is the real thing, but they don't put that at the start. And it sounds like, oh, what a we him lock her up because she insult him because she said why he and his wife have sanitary yeah, yeah, pads, yeah. See, thing and thing. But then the real thing come, typical European racist, mm. because he and his wife have publicly said homosexuality and lesbianism the practice of it is wrong and anti-african and that they're not having anything to do with it and it will not be legalized it's the same way in which as you know obama and um tried to come to african countries and in jamaica too trying to get us to Legitimate you know legalize the practice of homosexuality and lesbianism it just goes to show how these european racists homosexual, lesbian, um, imperialist, never ever stop in trying to push their ways on our people, irrespective. Yeah, yeah. 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 You know? That is how you know? the cookie crumbles. It's not, I mean, outside of him, I say, him not accept homosexuality. It's not a, 
it's not a no it's not good it's not good yeah you know it's not a powerhouse african where we could have say yeah no no he, no he, he's and definitely and now i start defending uh, because he's a lick out against women no 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 and and, and, and i and i agree with you but the reason why i brought it up yeah man that's just why to show you yeah, how yeah. these people are as yeah. you know how they are too you yeah, know yeah, another yeah, listeners you know yeah man yeah man yeah, right. you know, and, 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 a, and a final thing too. Um, we we no, we we, no, we noticed that um, Paul Kagami in um, in um, in Rwanda, right? The, again, they are positioning him now as to be the person that is the right person for Africa, and we are. Because Gabby teach us that that anytime you see Europeans praising an African, yeah, yeah, for watching, he's an African who working for them. Yeah, for watch it, yeah, for watch it, definitely. Yeah, man. So I read, I read an interview, recent interview with Paul Kagame, mm. and you know what he said? No wonder. Tony Blair is his friend. This is Tony Blair who doing best to try to overthrow President Mugabe. Anti-African refuse to apologize for the Holocaust against our people, etc. And this, and and he's saying, oh, Tony Blair is good and that and that, in spite of everything. So, you know, our people just uh, it is have to be aware yeah. of what is happening. And of course, you have heard of the whole um, fiasco with the farmer Romania and um, tennis player. Referring to Seri yeah, and one it, child, yes, yeah, yes, as, child, as, yeah, yeah. as a mix of milk and um, chocolate and thing. Mm. But you remember some time ago, there was a letter going around on social media, which later proved to be a hoax, saying, but in it it said, oh, Serena said that African men are no good, that they are obsolete yeah, yeah, and yeah. must get any other thing. But you see, it was a hoax. You know, because I checked it out and so on. But with her pregnancy, for a European, that is not a hoax. Yeah. And I leave it at that. All right, sir. Give thanks. We give thanks. Yeah. And African Liberation Day coming up soon, as we know, 25th. Yeah, we're celebrating um, Jack Ruby. May, we're celebrating Jack Ruby down here Friday, May the 12th. Jack Ruby. What you say? We're celebrating Jack Ruby Friday, May the 12th down here in St. Anne. Rename in the road, Jack Ruby Avenue. Yes, you know, because in, that 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 are the street name where people didn't give it from in at the time of Jack, and I'm really glad to hear that. Yeah. So you're gonna play music, pan it? Yeah, uh, and, you're just uh, no, 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 we're gonna play music, and it's a big thing. It's a whole day thing. I refer me go down in the whole day. All right. Last year, the whole of Wochi Black Heart, the whole of Wochi Black Heart, people did not try difficult to go through all Fern Gully last year. Well, the, the 12th, well, listen, I am really glad about that because Jaffax, Jata Jack Ruby, you know, mm. I'm a bridge and thing, and I'm really, really glad to say that place the name officially for, yeah. for him, you know, because yeah. remember them days when I played the sound and yeah, yeah, yeah. Fat John, Bobby, Bobby Culture, Culture yeah, yeah. and all Brigadier and all the bridge in Iran. Brigadier go down the top, Brigadier go down the top, Brigadier go down the top. Yeah, yeah, my yeah, man. Remember them days when Ira used to DJ it all out of St. Thomas when them play Arrows Island in the sun out um, on the miles, the bull yeah. you know, in the 70s. And Ira, a DJ, Jack Ruby, and Crutches and Puddy Roots, a Chad Pa Arrows and a Bill Arrows. We got technical with we are playing yeah. the town and, and, and him brother Ivan, Sonny Linton, and uh, thing, you know. Them kill him, and them kill him. Yeah, yeah boy, I tell you, man, Philip, man, we yeah, yeah. Kingston Technical, Adrian, man, my vex. Yeah. That's why I do a tribute in my magazine a couple years ago, in life story and thing, man. Arrows International, the first song for name, Arrows International, you know? Yeah, all right, Philip, man, Welcome still. Welcome all right, blessings, yeah. blessings, yeah. Larry. Scottish Edge, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah blessed. Yes, Mota. All right. Yeah, man, a good way, I am on the... Yeah, what I'm saying, but you know, I call it. Yeah, man, I give thanks to the, the town for, for, for my daughter, the man, talking about anger and them things. Oh, I am a fan, son, she named. 
Yeah, man. Just virgin. Just man. That, 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 them sound the really inspiring, man. Mm. Just virgin and I'm on fast with certain things still and them, them sound they just make I'm on look with the nice more deep and the boy, you know? Yeah. yeah. And them thing I'm on did I go through, so. Well, give thanks, it, man. It, give thanks. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Help. So that is, is like, it's like, like just a form of clarity, you know? Yeah. So, uh, them time they will, why, why, why I'm on Where I go through? Track. I give thanks, legend. All right, sir. Give thanks, yeah? Yeah, yeah man. Better love. Yeah. Yeah, we know, say, I worry about people that listen. I will know, say, it must, must seep into some of your consciousness. You know, we, we, we hope, say, it help. Somewhere along the line, it help. Somewhere. Because when I listen to it, it help, I too. You know, and it's years we listen. Years, years, years we listen. There's so much thing to bring to the people them on the radio. If we just have time enough. But there's so much things, man. So much things that we can do to radio. I don't know why they, 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 they announce that they might joke it out. Like they might joke it out, man. Yes, EL. Motor. You blessed. We get over here. Now. Yeah, what happened now? Where you say now? In the city the people's choice. People's court, man. They're never Yes, you're right. So, so the first you hear that? No, I mean, never know say you cut that one, man. Oh, you mean, that's the most popular poem you've ever done, man? And that, me fly out, man, Mr. Bissett. And me call back Obi. Mm. And him bust it up again, man. Oh, him just a plate now? Yeah. No, him, him, him come off now. But me, I okay, said this okay. Sunday. Yeah, yeah. Him play about three times straight, man. Okay, all right, sir. Me love it, motor. All right. But you don't play it to the, you don't play we it play it tonight. all the while, man. We play it all uh, the while. I just all right, listen, yeah, yeah. No, we don't play it tonight. We don't play it tonight. All right, give me a talk to them. No respect. All right, yes. Yes. Give it Maybe yes. tomorrow. Tomorrow. Look yes, where we play. Yes, sir. back here. Yeah, all right. Yes. What was it there? I don't feel I'm a teak in it. I don't feel I'm a teak in it. I don't feel I'm a Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Muta. Bless that man. No respect, brother. Me I tell you, say, even though we don't have the radio right you now, I tell you, say, you know, say, Muta, we get a dream, you know, Rasta. Mm. Oh, I am on a talk. My name is Alfonso Joseph Still, see? Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. So, when I say you no know, Muta, is that that there's a program that inspired me so much, brethren? Mm. May I tell you, say, God, no. Mm. My neighbor, may I tell you, Muta, may I tell you, say, they have touched me with them program like that. Right, you know, it, it, it's like, we never know how we, we just find the self, just decided to say, I can't make no more of your program, part of Bridget. <laughs> God, you inspire my life so much, Bridget. Yeah, well, we have, to know, go, well, you have to know is go to your bed. Yeah. And then tomorrow, when you wake up, you're here last night, yeah. which is now. Yes. Was. Yes, Muta. You just go to your bed now and lay down and sleep and wake <laughs> up tomorrow, man. You're going to find yes. out how, how deep it is in your consciousness. Yes, Muta. Yes, Muta. Yeah, man. Give thanks for yes. the train. Yeah, no respect. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. All right, brother. All right. All right. Because, see. Yeah, EL. EL. Yeah, greetings, Muta. Yeah, blessed man. Yeah, um. I imagine now the school from, from half a chain in a central plaza. The bridge of the... Oh, yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> you know, I'm trying to get to you, my boss. I don't put, ah. I don't put, you call me and get me loaded. Yeah, man, for real, man. Yeah, man. You know, I know your topic where you're on tonight, you know, but you know, but, you know, I for a long time thing, the Dwyer story. The man who did that shadow and go to Africa, that, that story that break, man. Liar, liar, him, liar. Yeah, but you can't yeah. get it now, man. That top four or four or one. No, not, not, no, not, no, we know. You have to replay that. that. You have to replay it. Huh? You have to replay that. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're going to look it up. We're going to look it up. Yeah, man, we're going to look it up. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, so, man, you know, man, all your business, man. Night, yeah, you know? yeah, all your business are going, man. Good, man. Good, my boss, man. You get me, yeah. Oh, turkey, man. <laughs> yeah, man, yeah, man, see you, man. 
Uh, Dubai, oh Dubai, what? No, boy, no motor. Hey. Um, I want to get your number. Yo. All right, my boss, give thanks. Yeah, Green man, give thanks. If Jackie yeah, Alice is supposed to love when you call us or no, I don't know. Oh, yeah, no, man, for real, man. A long no. time you know to see uh, Jackie do it. I'm not going to tell her to you call, trust me. Yeah, man, I'm wise if I big you to you no more. All right, right. give thanks. Yeah, give thanks. Alice is too, you know? yeah, man, give thanks, give thanks. All right, yes, man, give thanks. Yes, very, very authentic you that you know working 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 we love when we say a youth at work him and my wife just a work together we love that okay so now without further ado you know you could have deal with the word anybody else will call up and go hold on you know we promise you to play so this is the same guru now talking what is God a big question that you know big question The soul is the body is filthy. How is it possible? Yes, that's what we've been doing, isn't it so? Saying God is sacred, creation is filthy. How is it possible? Your very the very thought of God occurred to you only because you saw creation, isn't it? When you were born and you opened your eyes, you looked around so much creation. Before you came here, so much has happened. Obviously, you did not create it. So you thought, there must be a creator. This is how you come to the creator, isn't it? The moment you thought there must be a creator, because you are in a human form, you thought it must be a big man. A small man like me cannot do all this. It must be a big man. Just two hands, how can it do so much creation? My Isn't it? <laughs> Isn't it so? If you were a buffalo, you would be really thinking, God is a huge buffalo. <laughs> Isn't it so? Yes or no? You go and ask a buffalo and see. A buffalo will insist, God is a huge buffalo. Maybe four horns. <laughs> you know Idi Amin? You heard of Idi Amin? The Uganda man? Idi Amin declared, God is black. I agree with him. If a white man can have a white God, why can't a black man have a black god? <laughs> but both confused. We know God is brown. <laughs> because he visited us, you know. <laughs> Some time ago, I was talking to a group of people in Nashville, in Tennessee. And I was telling them a joke. In the joke, I just referred to God as Him. Immediately a few ladies stood up. Do you believe God is a man? I knew where it's going. I said, see, I <laughs> see I'm only telling you a joke. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You said Him. Do you believe God is a man? They take the jokes very seriously. <laughs> now women are all okay? Women. Such problems exist only in those cultures in India. We have man god, we have woman god, we have cow god, we have monkey god, we have everything. Every kind, crawling one, creeping one, flying one. Because we foresaw all the problems of the future. <laughs> See, when man was the most powerful force on the planet, man was naturally God. Now women are also gaining in their power. So women are questioning, why, why can't it be a woman? So tomorrow, suppose dogs gain a lot of power, which they're gaining. <laughs> 
So dogs will ask, why not a dog god? Actually the spelling also is close, you know. <laughs> He seems to be closer than you, isn't it? <laughs> so your idea of God is just an, ex an exaggerated version of yourself, isn't it? Your idea of God is just an exaggerated version of yourself. See, you are still not able to define yourself, isn't it? Whatever definition you put on yourself is not correct. Any kind of definition you put on you, it is not enough to describe this one. When this small piece of creation is like this, the source of creation, how are you going to put a definition on it? You cannot define it, you cannot understand it, you can only dissolve into it. You can experience it, you can never know it, you can't make knowledge out of it. Whatever you knowledge, have knowledge you have about God is just pure nonsense, cultural nonsense. Depending upon which kind of culture you are in, that kind of God you have. It can only be experienced. Experience does not mean you can eat it or you can grasp it. No, you can experience only by dissolving in it. There is no other way. So, we are just looking for methods of dissolution so that we can experience something far bigger than ourselves. You are listening to Muta Baruka. This is Yamla Van Zandt, author of Acts of Faith, and you are listening to Muta Baruka. Hi, my name is Stan, and I've been watching the Black Power community for the last 100 years. I just noticed that you guys have been having some problems figuring out what to do about me. You see, I'm a cracker. Yeah, the white man. The guy that has been running the whole world for the last 2,000 years. Well, the reason that I stopped by... I've been watching you guys fight over gaining real black power, and thought I would give you a few pointers. Since we white guys have been running things since we invaded Africa, I figured I would lay out a blueprint to help you achieve your objectives. Might as well use a plan that works, right? Besides, it beats the backward, no progress mistake repeating methods you people have been trying for the last 400 years. So I knew all of you needed some help. Especially, after Barack Obama got into office. He's a great guy, but a black man in a white man's house ain't really saying much considering all the hell you people have been through. Don't get me wrong. In many ways I know you were happy to get at least one black into office. This is good when you want to run politics. But ruling the world is what we white folks specialize in. Have you ever heard of the Illuminati? Well, that is the kind of coordination you are going to need in the world. Okay, let's get started. Today, I am going to give you three things that we did to take over the world. You can use these two and begin to gain real black power. Number one. The first step to taking over the world is unity. I know you have heard of this before but black people seem to really struggle with this one. You just don't seem to get it. You would rather fight against each other, instead of your enemies. This is bad business and you will never get true freedom doing things this way. Instead, do what we did to gain power. We divided and conquered entire countries based on their differences, while holding true to our similarities. I am white. There is no changing that. My God-born tendency is to preserve my own. Nothing is racist about that. It is just common sense. You people are the stupid ones, going around trying to love everybody, but yourselves. I'm talking about Jesus loves everyone. While you've been doing all the praying and jumping around, we have been buying up the world and making laws you have to abide by. No offense, but everyone else has unity but you. I mean, look at the business in your neighborhoods. The people that control it, don't even look like you. In fact, everyone who comes to this country sets up a business in the black community. The Koreans, the Indians, the Chinese, the list goes on and on. Aren't you tired of letting these other people supply all of your food, nails, and weaves? The one thing they have that you don't is unity. Number two. Once you get unity, 
you are going to need to get organized. When we took over the world we had a plan in place. A goal. Since we whites make up a small percentage of the global population, we knew the only way for us to exist was to enslave non-white people. This was our global plan for white But we didn't stop there. We organized a military force behind our goal and executed it to perfection. Killing men, women, and children across the globe with brute force. Whatever we needed, we just took it. And if blacks or Native Americans didn't like it, oh well. Remember, there are no rules in war. Our objective is to ensure survival. But you black people seem to think your economic hardships, social injustices, and high arrest rates just happened by chance alone. Never mind, we've worked nearly four centuries, day and night to keep you people exactly where we want you. On the plantation. Yeah. It's true. Let me tell you a little secret. Most white people are not going to tell you this. It's a old family secret we have kept pretty quiet about. And for a good reason. You see, all that free labor my white ancestors got from your black ancestors, translated into a lot of You blacks were shafted out of the money that was due to you in exchange for a good job and education. But it was us whites who own most of the jobs. Which brings me to my point. It's just another plantation. I say all of that to say, being organized is more than alignment, it is knowing the traps we have laid out for you. And then moving around them. Everybody knows but you blacks. That education will only keep you enslaved. It will only produce what it has already produced. A plantation worker is perfectly content, working and serving under another man's vision. You don't really think we are going to teach you to build a nation for yourselves, do you? If you were really educated you would be able to solve your own problems. Problems like gang violence, poor economics and underrepresentation. Instead, you will continue to pass the notion of getting a good job down to your children. This will brainwash them to be just like you. And the cycle will repeat for generations. While we whites continue to run things at the top, your grandchildren will be celebrating the first black Catholic Pope. I know this has been long, so let's move to number three. The third way to gain black power is the most important of all. It is this way because it deals more with your psychology than your conscious mind. When we took over the world we decided to use the most dangerous weapon of all to subjugate the darker peoples of the planet. We used a combination of white supremacy these people into complete submission. If a robber breaks into your house, rapes your family, kills your mother and father, then tells you that in order to go to heaven, you have to worship as God. If someone did that to me, then said that to be born again, I had to worship as God. I'd kill the bastard right on the spot. But you black people seem to have no problem worshipping the God of your enemies. Even worse is the fact that for all the praying that you have done, it seems like the God of the white man is just as racist as we are. Anytime you start believing in the God of your enemy, it pretty much means you're a complete whist of far gun to confront his adversary. This is a deep sickness because to believe the man who murdered your family is your friend is to believe that watermelons have gills. This kind of thinking lacks critical reasoning, a skill needed to defend territory and the minds of the youth. You even believe that Haiti, the only black does any of them practice voodoo. You even go further and believe that it was God that hit Haiti with a 7.5 earthquake. Your religious minded blacks thought this about New Orleans too. Let me tell you the truth. We gave you this God because we knew by worshipping a white god you would subconsciously be worshipping us. That was a part of our plan, and it worked like a charm on the early slave plantations. We whites decided to perfect it, and have taken our gods all over the world to dark people. You see, we know that if we can get you to put down your god, and pick up ours, you will lose your real power. This is really effective for controlling a people. Practically, by doing this, you will never fight against us because subconsciously you would be fighting God. But that is why you cheer for a white Jesus to kill all the darkies down in Haiti and New Orleans. Meanwhile our harp machines can shake up more prime real estate for the oil companies. To follow the God of your enemies, you will never rule the world, 
because you will always have your allegiance with a white man, instead of your god because you traded him in for a blunt-haired, blue-eyed hippie, whose name we took from the Greek god Zeus. So, let's recap. The top three things you need to do to rule the world, and to have black powers. Number one, get some unity. Stop killing each other over nickel bags of weed and coke. You are basically helping to kill off your own army. Stop it and unite. Number two, get organized. There is nothing worse than a bunch of rich rappers talking about Gronkstad and keeping it real. When all of them still work for rich white and Jewish men that pimp them for their talent. With Jay-Z, P. Diddy and Oprah, you black people should have your own distribution company by now. Instead of relying on your white backers to put out your albums. This is because you are not organized. Or athletes too. You black sports guys are stupid. You're a grown man and you still have an owner. Stop being a slave and wake up. When you die all you will have to pass on to your children is a championship ring. When I die, I will have at least two islands and a few manufacturing companies to extend my legacy. For you sports guys, no one will remember you and the money you blew on trying to floss will be right back into our hands. You need to organize and put your money and minds together for one common goal. Black power. Last but not least, you have to stop following the white man's God. He has really done nothing for you since you started to believe in him. Basically all my God has done for you is allow white guys like me to continue stealing from you. Sure, we'll give you a few rich blacks to make it up the ladder. But this is to keep up hope in you. So that you will teach cowardness and fear to your children and get nothing in return. While we will keep slaying and taking more land and control of the earth. It will be this way as long as you fall for the lie that some white dude is going to come down from the sky, stop it. Instead, go back to believing in your God. The God you had when you were rich in Africa and had diamonds, gold, and health. It certainly beats the crap the white man's God has given you. Even if you believed in rocks, you would probably have more luck than what you have gotten with this guy. One last thing. Black people need to stop saying that they're blessed. This is not only dumb, but it lets us white people know that we are still very much in control. If I steal you from your home and throw you into a cardboard box, have you work for 400 years on a plantation, just because I give you a pillow, doesn't mean that you are blessed. If a guy cuts off your hand, and then turns around and gives you a bandage, it don't mean anyone blessed you to work the next day. So you are not blessed just because the white man gives you a doggy treat. It simply means, so given all the crap you blacks have dealt with here in America, and abroad a new car or money for the life bill are just tools we white folks who are trying to run a plantation do to keep up the morale. So, if going from Africa, a land of milk and honey, diamonds and resources, a place where you had a name and thousands of acres of land, to a place where you are struggling to eat in a one-bedroom apartment every day means you are blessed than elephants have feet. The cutting edge has been a source of enlightenment and upliftment for the youth. Yeah? Yes, Muta. Blessed one. Yeah, blessed one. Yeah, blessed one. Yeah, man, give tongue. Yeah, man, that's what I am. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, man, yeah, yeah, you used to, you to move with him, yeah, mommy, like, you know, and all, yeah. mm-hmm. used to carry sound, come in here, you know, you used to use the top and computer, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, 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 yeah, at the same time, they are think them will announce the verdict for the case with the lady at St. Thomas, the pregnant lady. Yeah, so the police get up. Yeah. Mm. You didn't get to talk to the family in at all? No. Well, I don't know for your film side of the story, you know. And yeah, at you. Especially uh, you personally talking to them, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember when it happened, you know, and... The first time, the first time, trust me, it really grieved me. 
Yeah. I may have to do some research. I realize that uh, in all them time, the, the Virgin them never did that tape the program. Mm. You understand? Yeah, yeah. And what really happened now, more and know how come. Let get down. A man, he moved to the, the lady that was pregnant. Yeah. Moved to the sister. Yeah. And the sister and him colleagues them restrain him. Yeah. And then prove that in a court, say, uh, his accident. <laughs> that they might explain. Yeah, but I want to tell you, them old a man, them, a, a man gun go off. The man, him lady. I'm, I well, yesterday or day before, a man gun go off, and them old the man and charge him. Them charge him, so I don't know. You know, say I go, I, I go follow up on it, Bridget. Believe yes, me. Yes, man. Give thanks, Muta. Yeah, man. Blessed. Yes. I, you, know, you know, the weirdest thing about it, you know, is that uh, they're African, I hear this thing, you know, and I say, when I come forward, I go really talk to one of the family members, you know, and I don't remember at all. So it's a lucky thing I'll have you in a car, so no, because I have to go follow up on that. I have to follow up on it, believe you me. We talk about it too much. And you know, say, I'm more than one of them to get killed. And uh, the, the one where, the one where, them Lego the policeman that happened after that happened after a next pregnant woman did get shot in a in a um in a center mass they said we but we know you about that one up to now was about eight nine years now so yeah I, I, I'm glad to the bridge will call me and remind me man yes yeah 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 bless it uh, yeah, no style. Everything you're playing, everything in a sequence tonight, brother. Yeah, man, yeah, man. We'll set it up. We'll set it up. Yeah, I have to go get a tear part of my dish, you know, man. Because it's so important and vital. I bet you ever. You're going you to see it on YouTube, man. Yeah, man, yeah. YouTube, man. Especially, the, 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 the brother when I read the thing first, but, um, in so like the man who did the cock yard. Oh, the first one. The first yeah, one we played. No, it's all like it's. Oh no, 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 man! That's how we play every week. Oh. No, the first one we play was without music. It's yeah. all like the brother with the Desiderata. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, right. Not, not the, the Kafka, not the Kafka, like a oh. Desiderata. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm listening to the program. I'm not listening. But you know the which part? We listen to your program, I feel that we are no better. I find yeah. every black people for listening. Especially yes, tonight, especially tonight. Yeah. Especially tonight. <laughs> you have to play everything in a sequence, but everything we play. Yeah. Vital. Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, you see all the things where the man are talking about God and thing? Yeah. I told you, 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 that the call the family, everybody used to say you're mad and look at the man, 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 yeah, man, yeah, uh, knowledge is power, you know? I uh, know. Bless up and keep up work, yes, sir. Yeah, man, you Let me do two big up before I call for you, you know? Go on, I'll do it quick now. I'm working in Vice Cart and it's worth a listen now. Big, big him up at the EP. Mm. And, um, Bobo Alti, mm. in, um, New Alti, District Benson, Pure Center, and big him up, you know? It's worth a listen. All right. And can you do that, play, man? Big, big up, big up. Yeah, man, give thanks, Bridget. I'm blessed up. Yeah. I'm blessed up. yeah. Yeah, greetings, Muta. Blessed man. Yeah, yes, very well, Muta. And give thanks. Um, that tape we just did with the white virgin there. Mm. Uh, serious thing, virgin. Yeah, no, no, you yeah, just Muta. Mm. Um, in 2002, yeah. Mm. And the city of Bristol, the madam. You could go in most business. Um, the first of um August 2000. You were able to go into most businesses in Bristol and collect a map. Right? A map showing you around the city and it takes you to all the places where slaves were kept, yeah? Mm. And most of these places. Mm. Right? No, it's so happened that 2002, I happened to get a job with one of these companies restorating 
Mr. Eighteen arms from um, old churches. Mm. Now, all of these churches were over 300 years old. Now, the first day when I went, I, at the back of the pulpit is a baptism pit. And I was wondering why a baptism pit was in a white man church, especially a church over 300 years old. Mm. Because they do not baptize people like we. Anyway, um, I get to find out that um, underneath the church is three roads. Right? One leads from the dock where the ship comes in, and the other one leads from the church to an area called Clifton, mm. which is on the other side of the city. And the third road leads directly underneath St. Paul to a now, what that means, when the ship them come in with the, um, with the African them, there's a warehouse right at the dock where they were stored in the warehouse and then they were taken to um, the church. So that, um, that is the church I'm talking about. That is just one of them. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So they would take them underneath, go underneath the city, the road, run yeah, underneath yeah. the city. Yeah straight to underneath the church in at the border of St. Paul's and the city center. It come out of the church? Yeah, yeah, the, the tunnel, it actually runs yeah. from the dock where the ship comes yeah, in. Yeah, man, it come out of the go, tunnel, yeah, it come out of the church. Yeah, underneath the church. Yeah. Where they have a holding cell. Yeah. So, on the day of action, they would, what they would do, they would carry the slaves them underneath the church and keep them there mm. until the day of action. Yeah. Now, on the day of action, they would be taken up into the um, baptism pitches and they would be baptized, um, yeah. they would be beat off like 8 and 10 at a the time, they would wash off to go up on the, the action block. block. Yeah. And the action block is directly in front of the church. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Anyway, a little bit away from the church, there's another area. After they were brought off the action, they were tied up in the other area until they finished them shopping. Mm. Then those that were taken to uh, Clifton, uh, that we were going to Clifton, they would carry them underground mm. up to Clifton. And the other lot would be taken underground to Montpelier. Okay? <laughs> so, um, and another thing I get to find out is that for over three, and I've got um, actual documents of these things, yeah? mm. for over 300 years, from, 50, from um, 1531, every day for those 300 years, Africans were being baptized, okay? And, and, it, and after they turned them into Christian and got them conditioned, mm. then they were taken back to Africa and all over the col um, colonies. Yeah. To be um, missionaries, to convert, missionaries, huh? missionaries, they become missionaries, right? Right, yeah. You know? All right, I can tell you something in a Cape Coast in a Ghana, right? See. Where, the, where, the, where the dungeon them there, where they used to hold the slave them, African See. them, sorry, where they used to hold the African them to carry them upon the boat, mm. right at the gate, the main gate at the dungeon outside, See. it's two church, all right. And it, the dungeon is such that the master stay up at top and it's, it's like a two floor thing. All I need is the dungeon. The man on top is where them have the master them with them party and them have right. Them used to have church mm. service. Listen to what I say, you know. Yes, sir. Yeah. Mm. Them used to have, it's like how me sit in the area, if you know, and upstairs. See. Them have the newsroom and them thing there. Well, upstairs, the African them use to on and eat this all. For yes, months, sir. I wait for that ship. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the white people, them, they are top. I have party. And yes, one Sunday, them have church. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. outside of the gate, two big church there outside of Cape Coast in Ghana. You know, you know what? Nothing else. Aye. But that for sure, you say, this thing has something wrong. And if black yeah. people can't, there's something wrong. Yes, sir, another, thing, know that. another thing when we find out, sorry, another thing when I find out, Muta, is that you see these images that we have in our head, like the painting of the Last Supper, mm. and all these things where you find a black people yard. Black people yard, then. Yeah. Uh, now, all those images, 
were um, were placed in our subconscious long before the Bible was written, brethren. Mm. Right, because when you check it out, you know, those, those um, picture and painting was done by Michael and Michael Angelo, Angelo yes. yes. No, Michael and Angelo. Leonardo da Vinci. Was, Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah, all right. Now, both of them were, um, were before even um, King James. I mean, yeah. Angelo died in 1564, mm. and um, King James was born in 1566. Yeah, so, how did they it. know to paint these pictures even before the man who wrote the book was born? No, because the story they did it before King James or not. King James yeah, don't translate what they did it before him. Yeah, but the it, King it, James version, right? It's not him write it, you know. Him no, I, I know it wasn't him. It's yeah, um, so, Dr. Reynolds. Yeah, so the, 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 the painter them has of things where it was before the Bible. And then Lord uh, those, because these men were great artists, them yeah. incorporate those pictures. You know the Bible mm -hmm. stories, like the three wise men, where the Bible don't tell you nothing about no three wise men, the Last <laughs> Supper, which is not the mm -hmm. Last Supper, it's Passover. And yes. all of these stories, my, my, Michelangelo plays the Sistine Chapel, in, in a, where them, them, them are the him, and also the image of Jesus is him, is him, is him relative in paint, you know? Yes, sir. Yeah, Michelangelo uh, paint him relative and call it, say that is Jesus. Another thing, before I, before I did go to Bristol, Bolivia, I used to live in Birmingham. Yeah. And before, in the 80s, when um, Margaret Tasha come on, uh, when she take over in 1979, she brought out this nationality bill, right, where we have should pay to be British. Mm. No, no, brethren, from the day when she said that on the TV, you know, if I could push my hand through the telly and draw, no, and draw that out and dash it, wait, no, brethren. Because that is like, after them take me from the yard, yeah. right, after all these years. Yeah, but they might do worse than eh? that now. They might do worse than that now. You know, see what they might do? They might do worse than that now, brethren. Yes, sir. But that was a but, tip of the iceberg. All uh, right. But yeah, where did they mention Birmingham, yeah? I, during those time when Tasha come and they have um, a only a strike. So um, people were on three day a week. And I get a job with, a, with the council. And they sent me to work on a church, a referee in a church. Mm. And, and, and the church is a big cellar. And it is flooded. So I pump out the water and I hold it a book within the next one back to the world. Hold books, Virgin. Eh. And me, me take them out. And the world is an age. This were an agreed point among all people of discernment. Mm. And nothing remained but to set it up as a principal subject of mirth and ridicule. See? So, it is the um, digest um, dictionary. It, um, ridicule means laughable, ridiculous. Ridiculous, yes. yes. Yeah, you understand? Yeah, well, um, yeah, but you see, we can't figure out how black people still. In a, the title. Anyway, we have to move it up, Bridget, because... Yes, sir. Yeah, mm -hmm. Four minutes left for the program, done. Give thanks, sir. Well, well, we'll put the action here tomorrow to Club, talk about yeah. Obama's visit. Want well, Obama visit? Well, he uh, you know, he, he says something, you know, when he come here, he say, um, Jamaica, one of his speech, he said, Jamaica means more to the United States, means more than just a country to the United States yeah, so, of America. So, so what you want to talk about, you know, that? What, what kind of... What, 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 Really because what? all this land tax and thing was, um, this thing about King James already, all this, them things that go uh, on, uh, King right. James set this up from them time there. Eh? All right, sir, give thanks, yes. Okay, so you as you know, give thanks to the moment, give thanks to the time, give thanks to the energy. We'll be forwarding on Thursday, which is today, from 2 to 5.45 on the Stepping Razor, the Art of War. Different program, total different program. So give thanks, give thanks. Why you love Vita, as usual, you know. Tracy who left here very early today. You know, it was a pity. How old that? Can't say how old that now. Uh, <laughs> Matrix, the Atrix, man. Matrix, if not use no fix, eh? Oh, I don't know who put them there, you know. 
But the red part there, oh, me not to the red balloon. I don't have blue and white, but I'm to the red one. I don't know what them did happen at the studio. I come here, come see them, say, do you? But I don't say nothing. I don't touch them. For what? No, I'm on a red, white, and blue bubble balloon. They want to know. Yeah, you talk about them want a red balloon. Yeah, it matter what them want a red balloon, black balloon, and green balloon. A red, white, and blue balloon. They want. You know what I'm saying? A red and white that. It look like the red bus, which, which United States flag. Barber shop. <laughs> a barber shop colors. A barber shop colors. It look like the red bus. Pan them. It look like the red bus. Pan them inside there. Believe you me. Maybe that's somebody birthday. I hope I birth. Are you a birthday? Oh, I'm a big year birthday. Big year birthday. I was a big year birthday. Then put it up there for man. Happy birthday, baby. Yeah, big year. Happy birthday, big year. <laughs> me like you balloon them. <laughs> With a bus one before me leave ya. Yeah. Yes. All right. So you know, I gone. We gone. You know.